What up, though? Welcome back to the Free Game Producer Podcast. I'm Brian Andre in the building. I got the super producer, the multi platinum producer, the five time <laughs> number one billboard. We back. Top 200 producer, world power in the building. What up, homeboy? What up, what up, what up, what up, what up man? We back in this thing, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we, got the, we got the band with Phenom. Uh, Dope singer, you know what I'm saying? Flagship yep. artist to band with, Come you know on, what I'm saying? Man. Straight out of Mississippi. What? Josh Waters in the building. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know? What's up, man? Yes, I'm sir. mad I don't have like a sound bite like Will got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to work on that, man. We got to work on that, man. So, yo, man, we've been we've been off for a minute. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, a lot of, lot of things going on, you know, man. Yeah. We all are uh, mm. sort of experiencing the whole you know, COVID-19 thing yeah. and, um, you know, just the resetting and, and just getting used to being around people again, man. Um, I'm glad to be back. You know, uh, we, we you know, had a great run, man, with Airbit. Shout out to Airbit, man. And it's an awesome, we had an awesome situation going with them, man. And, uh, you know, we finally just kind of lived out the contract, man. And, you know, we back to it, man. So, and I, 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 I'm super stoked, man, because, you know, this first show, man, got my boy on this thing, man. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm man. saying? Yeah, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited, man. And it's the first time we actually, like, I think, maybe not the first or maybe the first official time we have the actual artist on the show. Because I've yeah. been wanting to get an artist for the longest. Yeah. To talk music producer stuff with an artist. Well, I, do yeah. this for us, man, because, you know, a lot of people don't. May not understand what we up to now, man. Kind of uh-huh. explain where you want to take the show at this point, because you know we we <clears throat> we're known for producer talk and getting in here with the producers and finding out what makes them yeah. who they are and what yeah. they do. Talk to us about what you what you envision for this. Well, it's funny that you say that because my vision is still the same as it always been. I think it's more so. I think we we ready to live it up. We, yeah. we ready to fulfill that vision. There it is. Because I've always wanted to cater to. Uh, people who want to get into music, yeah, but not necessarily be on the the um, forefront. Like you can have a good career in music without being an artist, without being on TV, without being a man. There's so many careers yeah. behind the scene. Hence the word production. Come Produce on. means to make, right? There it is. So there's so many moving parts, right? There it is. So um, my goal was to have all types of people, though, including the artists. You know, because a lot of times the artist does. Inter- I've never heard an artist do an interview where they talk about strictly about the behind the scenes aspect of what makes them who they are. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like an artist producer, for example, you can't uh, put out a song without an artist. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's like, why are we, why aren't we talking to artists about, yeah. about that process? About their experience. With yeah. yeah. To, 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 to help producers, you know? So I would like to, you know, uh, we've always, you know, we've interviewed engineers, uh, uh, heads of uh, performance rights organizations. Yeah. Uh, heads of the Grammy chapters. Yeah, we've always diversified yeah. a little bit, but I really want to start, you know, really making a conscious effort to get artists on the show. Yeah, artists on the I'm show. I'm with it, man. I think it was a great, you know, when we had our meetings about this, you know, yeah. and, and regrouping and rebranding. Um, I was I was 100 percent with it. I feel like it's a great way to just see the music business, you know, from a broader perspective. For sure. So I'm excited to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I know what I know what we put Josh through, so I, this is gonna be a great <laughs> conversation, man. So, for let's sure, get, man. Uh, let's kick this thing off, man. What you got on the agenda today? Well, I first uh, want to know about you know what all you got going because I see you. I've seen you said something about you did like a hundred beats and, and yeah, so man. and so. And even with Josh, we're gonna kind of get to get to Josh specifically in a yeah. little bit, but just you with Josh, you you uh, I yeah. saw you, you had like C note in here one day recording some, you know, <laughs> you hey, what's crazy <laughs> though. I can't even talk about the many hats I have I, to I wear see little, You know, microphone companies and <laughs> gear companies got little ads with you. You know, all kind of stuff yeah, going bro. on, man. So I'm I'm stoked, <laughs> man. Honestly, bro. You know, everything has been good throughout this season. You know, I consider this whole COVID season a real thing. For sure. Since 2020, you know, um, we decided, man, to just kind of up the ante around here at Bandwidth. You know, which is of course our our you know, business and facility mm-hmm. and all those things. Yeah. And so we started out, man, with a lofty idea of putting out like a record every week on Josh. So we yeah. did that and we had to produce that whole 
moment. And mm-hmm. then after that, you know, we decided to kick up the free game podcast and we were doing that throughout that year. And then yeah. um, as time just kept going, man, you know, momentum kept picking up. So we jumped into all kinds of things. It's funny that you mentioned that uh, C-Note was here, man, but yeah. you wouldn't believe that I, w- I didn't have nothing to do with me. We okay. we were actually hired to be the film crew for uh, that night. Okay. So he was in here doing like a special product placement thing with a company. I can't remember. Okay. The, Ar- Arteria was the company. Okay. And um and they hired us to do the the you know the yeah. visuals for it. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy, man. Like whatever has to be done around here, bro. Like that's what what I'm gonna do, and that's what yeah. our company is gonna do for whoever <clears throat> comes around. So, and just because we haven't had an episode in a long time, this might be somebody's first time hearing what's going on. Yeah. What do you mean your studio? What is this? We're yeah. Sitting so in? we're uh, sitting in a. What's, what's yeah. Going so on? we right now, you know, we're in the recording studio of Bandwidth Atlanta. Okay. Which is a recording facility, um, you know, in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're not quite South Atlanta, but in Atlanta, we're um. East Point is really where we are. For sure. And so... Um, it's not Atlanta, according to uh, yeah. Homegirl. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Atlanta. I'm ready to go. Shout out to her. That's a dope yeah, record. But. Dope, yeah. <laughs> but we... Yeah, man. So we just over here, you know, uh, full-fledged facility, man. We do um, production here. We've got three recording studios. We've got, like, a content studio. We've got offices. We've got a gym. A big ass backyard, all kinds of crazy stuff that yeah. helps us, you know, facilitate whatever we want to when it comes to music. Um, and then we also have a label, which is also bandwidth. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We just decided to brand everything the same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's 2020. It's 2021. Hey, you can't be coughing. Everybody looking crazy with people. Now nah, I'm just messing with you. I'm, uh, I, just, I just ate some food. Sorry. Yeah. Y'all. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. So essentially, you know, we just uh, you know, one stop shop for anything music, man. Mm-hmm. Man, we up in this bit like. Ah. Hey, <laughs> shout out to our new producer, man. We got uh, Tessa. Hutchinson, yeah. man, who's joined us to be the producer of the show now, man. And so, shout out to Tessa, man. Uh, right shout out, out to Tessa, man. We can talk about how much she does around here, too, at some point. For sure, for but, sure. Absolutely. Know, for sure. Cool, oh, man. <laughs> well, yo, man, let's catch up on some stuff. Because, you know, we usually, uh, we do it like we were doing like weekly for a while, then we did yep. bi weekly. One thing I love that we used to do, we used to get on and talk about the new stuff that, re- that released, right? Yep. It's been a long time. I think we skipped 2021, right? So, um, what are some of y'all uh, best albums of uh, 2021? Now, for me, I'm a hip hop guy, so most of them are hip hop for me. And of course, I got the Grammy nominations sitting up here, you know, which are which are coming out. Yeah, I think in April. You know what I'm saying? But what do y'all? You know, what what some of the music y'all enjoyed last year? Yeah. Um, that if you asking my list. me, yeah, I, I had some favorites, man. Honestly, bro, like uh, you know, top of top of the list for me, man, was um, <coughs> Baby King. Like we oh, had, we, okay. uh, we you, I, I couldn't wait to talk about this because okay. I know, I sort of know how you felt about the project just from you know brief conversation. Mm-hmm. But I really liked Baby Keem's album because it was really jarring to me at, in a time when I was expecting to hear something less disruptive. So hmm. you know, I'm still trying to embrace his artistry. Okay. Because he has a lot of similarities to like quite a few people to me. However, that doesn't didn't turn me off. Um, Isaiah Rashad was one of my favorites last year, man. Like real talk, like okay. I got put on, you know, from from people. Josh, in fact, you, you know, is a fan of his music, so I was um, put on to that, and so I was like really. Really, you know, we got inside jokes about all that, but that's a whole other thing. We. we we discuss that some other time, but at this point, we can discuss it because I got we had a, a a debate about that the other night in the yeah. studio that I f- kind of disagree with y'all on. We, yeah, we, we might we might can get to that. Yeah, we later. can. We might. I don't know if I want to <laughs> touch it. I don't know if I want to touch it on our first show back. But but if it goes, hey, there, I'm with go I'm with everything. I'm, I'm with whatever. I'm not afraid of nothing. Man. At, at any and, rate, I will say you know creatively, it was one of my he had one of my favorite albums last year, okay. and I wasn't up on it. Like I was one of those guys that always <clears> felt like, um, you know how. You have these monster labels that have these rosters that are incredible. And yeah. then it's always the one or two guys that's just like kind of on the roster. Right. Yeah. I, 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 to be completely honest, I had kind of written him off as one of those artists okay. over there at TDE. But mm-hmm. then, boom, when he dropped his project, I was like, oh, 
So that's why he was waiting, because this shit fire. Right. Anyway. That, well, and now I just say for the record, for me, for the record, I think that regardless of whatever, I think that he can still have a good career. And I think that, like, as long as he handles this properly, he'll be fine because yeah. it's nothing wrong. If you gay, then <laughs> yeah. God for, bless. Listen, you for, the record, for the record, you're, <laughs> yeah. abs- you're absolutely so I, right. I, I, so I think that as long as he just come on and say, look, y'all, this is what it is. My bad for not telling y'all sooner, but this is what it is. Anyway, yeah. I got these banging ass, and I, I'll rap y'all niggas. So what up? You know what I'm saying? So Facts. As long as he can do that, he'll be fine, man. I think so, you know, too, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we can dig deeper later. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, okay. Okay. But and shout out to, to the, the album was The um the House is Burning. Right? Yeah. Incredible. Sh- shout out to uh, Devin Malik, Beat Butcher, Cal Banks, Hollywood, Cole. Mm. Um, oh, I said Devin Malik, um, Kenny Beats is on there. You know, shout out to all those producers on there. Shout out to the uh, Baby King producers, man. Uh, Frank Dukes, DJ Dahi. Crazy, um, man. You know what I'm saying? He had uh he he's on there like as a as a producer. Soundwave right. was on there yeah. as well, man. So shout out to that album, man. And those two albums I kinda like overlooked. Man, they were okay to me, but they weren't my favorites. But shout out to that. What about you, Jeff? Who you like? Uh man? my favorites, definitely the Isaiah Rashad project. Yep. Uh I think Vince Staples put out a crazy album last year. Really? Okay. Vince, Vince project was dumb. I'm still spinning that one super. Okay. Heavy. Yeah. Um who else got some love from me last year, bro? Really? Mick, the, did Mick Jenkins drop some last year? Was Mick it? Jenkins. No, was it early this year or late last year? I can't remember, but I, I don't do. remember, but it had to have been last year because remember we tried to put that song in the show. Yeah. So Mick Jenkins dropped the album last year that I was uh, listening to. Pretty yeah. Heavy. Yeah. That's, yeah. Fire. Super fire. I yeah. got put on the Mick Jenkins late. And like I'm a I'm a Stone fan, bro. Yeah, so man. okay, yeah, I think Kenny Beats did the majority of that uh, Vince Staples album. Yeah. yeah now Vince project was crazy. I ain't mm. even checked that one yet, yeah. so I got to definitely check that out. Yeah, okay. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a commercial, I mean, I'm going to sound like a traditional boom bap commercial hip-hop nigga, man, because I like the, uh, you know, the Nas hit boy. And and, and the fact that him and dope. the fact that him, they did two albums. The fact that him and hit boy did two complete yeah. albums in, yeah, one, in one calendar year. And I, I, I was happy for that because, remember, you and I, we were, like, not, Impressed at all with the no, I was you was oh, okay. Nazir. Okay. I like Nazir. Okay, you yeah. didn't like Nazir. No, nah, I didn't like that. I still like it, but but it yeah, don't. I still com- don't. But it, <laughs> I, I like it. I like it a lot. Shout out to Bugs, my you know, Shout my, out to Nas, all them and good he music. My, yeah. I liked it, but they don't. They don't. They ain't touching none of the King's Disease one or two or Black Magic. Yeah, fire straight up. So those are my favorite. But I think for me, my favorite was between uh, the Nas uh, King's Disease two. And uh, Tyler's album, I think Tyler, Tyler album, Piedra. yeah, I think Tyler him. album might be his best album he made, and yeah. that's that's a, a big statement because I love Flower Boy and Igor, mm. but I think Call Me If You Get Lost, he's really rapping more on that album. I definitely agree with the rap aspect. Mm-hmm. I think the reason why I wasn't at the top top of my list, it mm-hmm. felt like the early mixtape days, which I think he went for that. On he did, purpose, yeah. You know what I'm saying? He did. Even having yeah. uh, what drama, drama was all through the project, yeah. but like. Yeah, yeah, it was super. It was super like early mixtape feeling, but yeah, it was dope right. for sure. And I like old stuff, so I like the uh, Silk Sonic album. Silk Sonic, a album. whole lot. I liked a few of the songs. I wasn't like, I didn't dive all the way. I didn't. Dive I did. Way. I'm still listening to that, that album. So shout out. And then they, they did the, uh, the the Valentine's. Uh, they did the Confunction uh, Love Train. Love you know train. why they I did. appreciate it? Because I'm probably gonna get slammed later. But okay. I appreciated the Silk Sonic album because it was a retro energy album, but it didn't sound like they were trying to go way back to do it. Mm-hmm. They still kept it fresh and new. Yeah. As opposed to Don't hate on my boys. Don't don't hate on my, I, my guys, man. I'm pretty, you probably finna just hate I'm me. I'm about to get up walking. Don't hate on my guys. I'm man. talking about the weekend. Oh, okay. Oh. So to me. I think the weekends. Uh, so for clarity, the weekends album is it's dope. It's a dope album, man. but it's not dope. Like, does that make sense? Because it's got all of the elements of incredible mm. mixes, incredible sound. Yeah. It's great. It's great. I didn't like it though because, and who cares what I like? So let me just be clear. But I didn't like it because. I felt like it. They just went back and just completely tried to rip Michael Jackson, the sound of Michael Jackson, and I was just like, "Bro, it 
could have been done right. It could have been done dopely if he if it would have just been take that energy and make it new. Yeah. But if you if the goal was to just go sound like that shit, then cool, fuck it. It's whatever. Y'all got that. You got that off, and I just didn't like it. But mm, I don't know if I agree with that. But you, you're the you're the producer's producer, so yeah, this is, this I'm gonna defer strictly, to you. I'm gonna defer to you. But that, to me, it just sounded like his take on that. Oh, to me, it's no different than what Bruno Mars see, always but does. No, but every see, album. that's the thing that I, that's the thing, I think that's what I'm trying to say. I didn't get from it. I, mm. I felt like I was going, bro. I it don't did. feel like you try to re. It feel like you just like Jack. It didn't feel like it was your own version of it. It was like see, that's you what just I felt. I, like, I felt it was his version yeah. of it, and it don't compare to to Thriller. No, I wasn't. Try, I definitely wasn't. It, I, I wasn't even gonna do that. It, it don't. It don't compare to that. But it's like his version, and it's dope. I don't think it's like. You know, on that level, but I think it's pretty. Dope, I, I can live with the fact that I can live with it. I he just, had that one song with oh, "Best Friend, Best Friends." That's some, that's shit jamming. I'm about to go listen back because I was I, I was not turned on, bro. I was not feeling it. Nah, not I the like way that, I like. Not yeah. the way I felt about you know Silk Sonic and like and 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 just Bruno <laughs> Mars in general, who's been basically throwing back energy for his pretty much most of his career at this point, and not for nothing. Talk about making an album. The concept of that weekend album was amazing. Now that was that dope. was a dope concept, and the rollout was dope yeah. with Jim Carrey narrating. And then when you really studied, because if you go, you can go on YouTube, you can find like a bunch of fan theories. Like he got people theorizing what it really means. Or that's he, dope. He, he's like in the in the in the afterlife. He's not quite in hell or heaven yet. He's kind of like in limbo, and he got to find his way back. You know, it's it's really a deep concept when you yeah, when you put it all together. Maybe man. I need to go. I'll go look that's into fair. it for that. That yeah. part though is su- concept, super crazy. Yeah, I think I, I did a review video, and what I said was I haven't seen a concept this kind of um, that made you think this much since Kendrick Lamar's mm. last album, Damn. Because hmm. damn, you had to kind of get the theories, you know, forwards and backwards and, and all that. This is kind of similar to that. You had to really kind of put it together. He's telling a story about somebody who, who uh, apparently, it got regrets. Because remember, he's like an old man. He had an old man, a dull makeup, like he's an yeah, old man. Yeah, he's an old man with regrets about like his younger life. Hmm. So he's trying to like go back some kind of way. He's about to die. Man, you gonna it's, make you me, gonna let me go? Listen to it, really dope. It's, Before I listen to it in, in, from that perspective, it's really dope. It's like, I like it. Already. It's really dope. Now, how he did it, so I, okay, so I might have to not for nothing, it. you know. But I, you know, I, don't I know, still man. didn't like the That's way fair. it sounded though. That That's fair. I did. I like yeah, that, I feel man. like unless because if you're a weekend fan, I mm-hmm. think they listen to it sitting in that seat already. Like they probably followed the entire. Journey. Exactly. I just listened yeah. to it when it dropped and just wasn't yeah. pulled in. Maybe but it's a fan album. Maybe it wasn't made for like the person, like a person like me who's who enjoys his music, but is not necessarily a, like a fanatic for of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you know, because mm. you know, Michael Jackson used to do shit like that, except for everybody was a fanatic for Michael Jackson. That's so true. True. Everybody understood Thriller from the beginning of Thriller. Mm-hmm. So we didn't yeah. have to go, you know, figure that shit out. That's real. Got you. So, okay, that's what's up, man. Uh, I will go over the Grammy nominations, man. We might could do that closer to the, to the award show. Come out in, in next month. Okay, maybe we'll do an episode and we really dive into that, man. Yes, and all that. But I do think they need more hip hop categories because that's the only thing that I really feel what's strongly about. That. Do you think the Grammys are gonna even matter here soon? Like I'm, I I am a definitely, you know, I'm great friends with the Grammys. I got like a lot of great i'm just this i just think this is just fair questioning you know what i'm saying because mm-hmm. i don't want to be you know politically incorrect here because right, right. we got some great friends over there mm-hmm. however um uh, i just wonder because i'm saying to myself like first off there's so much music now that like categories almost sound like just a crazy ass concept altogether. like what are we talking about yeah you know what yeah. i mean like how, like yeah bro like to, to even be mentioning that hip hop don't have enough categories now is almost just like a dumbass conversation. You, you know what I mean? Cause it's like what? The hip hop been around almost fifty years now, coming up coming up on fifty years. Yep. Bro, please. Like we should know better. We should have that we should have probably just as many hip hop categories as any other category. Cause yeah. you know, rock and roll ain't really like as huge as it used to be. You know, but they got like traditional rock or traditional pop, contemporary. There's a, yeah, bro. where it's like hip hop. We we definitely need a traditional hip hop category and, for sure. And this what this the part I don't like about it. And this is just me being transparent. I have an issue with people sneaking off and doing like the, making these new secret like they join these secret areas of the Grammys and then they go win. Mm-hmm. It's like you know I go read a children's book 
and because I was the only person who thought to do this, <laughs> oh man, I can go over here and win a Grammy. Grammy being a children's book reader. And it's like, that's what a lot of awards with, with the Oscars, yeah. with these little documentaries, with these little short commercials with Emmys. He's an Emmy winner because, like, like QB, the Q, was it the QB thing where they had the little the little company that made the short, right? And they went they went out of business, right? They failed, but they all got all these Emmy awards hey. for these two minute skits. Exactly. I think that that's the kind of stuff that needs to be addressed, Cause especially when you have people, man, who aren't do not have nearly the reach or the money or the or the connections to get great music. Great ideas, like you said with the weekend, great concepts, like that kind of stuff doesn't get recognized because it's so limited to who it is. That's a whole can of worms right there. That's a big can of worms because you can say that even with like um for example, some of the R and B subcategories, you know, where it's only a handful of people making that stuff anyway, right? Not to not stuff in the bad sense, but like a you know, there's there's some R and B what is it called? Like a eccentric R and B or R and B neo something weird yeah. R and B where it's just like it's not a lot of people you know what I'm saying doing that you know I would almost go as far as to say they need to create tears <clears throat> there just needs to be tears in the Grammys like to win a <clears throat> Grammy and this might suck for a lot of people but like it should just automatically be like you have to have a major record deal you need to have such and such and such that needs to be some kind of thing that eliminates people like myself or Josh. You, you can't do major though, because that's kind of like, I, 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 I understand the politics and all that. I'm mm-hmm. done, I'm just trying to try to paint the picture of like, bro, there's no way you're going to win a Grammy because you don't qualify from a tier space. So that way we don't have to have a awkward conversation as to why, I get it. Maybe like like the, the the junior Grammys or the amateur people who were like, who were like yeah, or maybe have several Grammys. Like instead mm. of having just one big one every year, like bro, y'all need to break this down into like quarters, or something quarters. Like that. Yeah. Hmm. You know what I mean? Or Dang. or even genres. Like bro, this is the, the rap R&B, Grammys. This is the rap Grammys, bro. Right. Like yeah. boom, y'all get to sit here and now I like that right there. Boom, yeah. like this whole show is dedicated, and now we still gonna hold it to the same <clears> standards <throat> of the real Grammys. We not finna come here and do no super hood shit. However, right. we can create an environment that just talks about just rap shit. So yeah. new rap artists with less than a hundred thousand plays category. Right. You See, know, the, boo, 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 boo. I guess the only little itty bitty pushback about that is because is if not I'm not mistaken, the Grammys is supposed to be about the art. Am I wrong? Or I'm not I'm not definitely not saying take that part out. Like No, I'm saying because when you start talking about record sales and his plays and all that, that's that has nothing to do with art necessarily. Yeah, but there's still art with people with less than a hundred thousand plays. True, but some of those that are could arguably be artistically just as good as somebody with a million plays. It could be technically. So, so. But you, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that. Yeah, I don't I think it. that Nas or someone who's been in the business twenty years that has done the best work of their life this year. I don't care if somebody Joe Blow Schmo, but it, as long as it's the same category, the same type of record as Nas, if it's better than Nas and the peers around the, the round table agree that that's better than Nas, sorry Nas. Yeah, I can already see why the Grammys got so many issues. I'm just saying. You know, I'm 100% it's, 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 with it's you. fair. I don't care. It's not a lifetime, not for a lifetime achievement, like an OG award. Okay. You know, I still think it. I, we're getting somewhere with this conversation that's a, though, that's but pretty interesting. But I, I definitely say. think that, like, that's listen, bro, y'all gotta break. They gotta start breaking this up, <laughs> like, and they, they, you know, they might still only be one televised, huge one because that's expensive. You can't do that every quarter, but bro, nah, it's just not. It's right now. Do it's y'all just not a good still look. participate in in the, in the Atlanta chapter of Grammys? Um, I I don't anymore, but I do intend on it. You know what I'm saying? And Josh. I just, we're yeah. working on making working it happen. On it. Yeah, We've been like building Jack, relationships. Josh over. actually was. It, I'm glad you said that. He was just featured Absolutely, on yeah. the Grammys. Uh, the they press did play a at press home. play at home thing, which yeah. is uh, excellent. You know, I. It's not like they don't give and don't want to see new artists and new things happen. Because if, if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's been years since I even went to a meeting. Because I was, I had the, the school when I was a student. I, yeah. was, I was automatically in it, but I haven't. I've never 
tried to renew since then. But if I'm not mistaken, as long as you put out music, you can join. I feel like we probably should all look into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I definitely was a part of it at one point, and then yeah. Just, so if you put out music, you, you should just go ahead and join. Yeah. That way, we can, these discussions can be had at your local meeting. With I still think it's a lot more to yeah. it. But no, but that's a start yeah. though. That's yeah. when you start. Absolutely, because because if you're a part of it, you're a part of your national organization as well. Just yeah. your local chapter, so you can, fl- you know, you get an invitation invitation to the Grammys. They send you an invite, right? And you can you can buy a ticket to the Grammys right. and go out there and. Go to the meetings there, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then as your other your other business and, and music fluctuates, your influence in the organization fluctuates, right? Mm-hmm. But you can be in it from the the from tiers, right. at the smallest tier, right? So So if we got tiers to vote it, we real. should have tiers of actually who can win. Possibly. I don't know. But that's a that's a good discussion, Crickets. man. What a cricket button it. <laughs> Stop playing. All right, we back to the Free Game Producer Podcast with the big homie Will Power and Josh Waters. And I want to get into Josh Waters' story, man. Um, just got verified on IG. Hey. You know what I'm saying? It's about time they recognize what's going on here. Come on, you know man. What I'm Come on, man. Come on, man. Shout it. Get that man this check. You understand what I'm saying? Will Power's coming next. Y'all hear that? Put Give Will Power his fucking check. Hey, straight up. Peace Bring me a real boy. check. Stop playing. <laughs> I need a goddamn check I can cash. But yo, Josh Waters, man. So let, let everybody know. Where you from? Mississippi, right? Yeah, I'm from Hattiesburg, <laughs> Mississippi. Man. Hattiesburg. How big is Hattiesburg? Hattiesburg. Uh, it's not big at all, bro. Growing up, we probably had like thirty, forty thousand people. Now it might be like sixty, seventy thousand people. There, college town. Okay. Oh, what school yeah. is there? Uh, Southern Miss, USM. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Brett dope. Favre went to USM. Brett Favre. Most okay. people know it once we say that, but yeah, Brett Favre okay, went bet. to USM. Yeah. Who were your uh, musical influences growing up, man? Growing up, man, my influences were like super, super like heavy in Neo Soul, Erica Badu, Music uh, Soul Child, okay. Jill Scott. Yeah, like my mom grew up in the church, so mm-hmm. her, her way of not like killing us with the gospel music was kind of like, I'll just turn this on. And I gravitated towards it, man. So when I had the opportunity to actually start making music, that was what like just naturally flowed out of me, you know? Dope, man. When did you start doing music? I started doing music when I was about 14. It's my first time actually getting in the studio. Okay. Had been singing all my life. My mom was a vocalist. My brother's a musician. So grew up around music, always knowing that I could. You know what okay. I mean? But like, first time in the studio, I was 14. 14 years old. Tell, how'd that story go? How did that come about? So I had this, <laughs> it's crazy. I had this cousin, man, who lived in, when people hear Mississippi, they're like, oh, you from the country. But there's Mississippi, and then there's the country parts of Mississippi. Okay. And my family that's from the country, man, they brought me down as this Southern soul artist. You ever heard of Calvin Richardson? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. Okay. Calvin Richardson, country shout out. Calvin exactly. <laughs> so it's just a Southern soul market, uh, okay. like borderline blues, realistically, but like. Okay. Joe's hands <laughs> on <laughs> the <laughs> so like my my cousin was managing Calvin, right? Okay. Or like role managing him or whatnot. And he would like bring me to different shows and stuff and bring me out. And so one time I went to visit them in Heidelberg, Mississippi, and I'm like, I want to do music. He's like, bring a song. And if you got a song, I'll take you to the studio recorded. I came back two weeks later, had it up written on paper or whatnot. I'm a kid. And you wrote the song. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Wrote the record, went to the studio, and of course now they had to help me out eventually. Like, I don't know if you should say that, say this type of thing. Okay. But I came with a full like Verse, chorus type of situation. Uh, he took me to the studio. I was in like this shed. We recorded the record and I fell Who in love. Who did the beat? Oh uh, man, what's his name? Sean. His name was Sean. Okay. This is a, Sean was the guy who owned the studio. It was Shout a shed. Out to Sean, man. Shout out to Sean. <laughs> Sean. Yeah, I was like, oh. I think he goes by <laughs> Just Structure, man. That's his producer name, Just Structure. Okay. He had this set up in his backyard, man, and, okay. and we locked in that whole night. Dope, man. So where'd you go? I'm, I'm interested. How did you progress from there? Like, did you start from just doing that records? Point, no, so that point Hold was... Hold on, let me cut into this shit, man. Because I see the video. Josh had a whole music video, man. <laughs> we was sitting on the bench with this girl and this shit. Bro, we got to find that cut that in. <laughs> no, gotta, it's still up. It's still up. Josh Waters, beautiful love, bro. So I'll say about two years after that, my mom had you, buddy, you, bro. You, were you 14 then? Now, I was 16 on that video. Okay. So, fast forward, that in-between space, my mom knew I was the kid that, like, once I get good at something, I would quit it, right? Okay. So, she wanted to make sure before investing in me that I was going to really do this music thing, okay. right? So, once I, I stuck with it, I would go to different... My cousin Smurf, she was rapping. She would bring me to the studios. I showed a level of interest, right? Okay. And then, talent shows at schools, I started performing and stuff. And there was this guy that came down from Atlanta. He moved there. He started this independent label. Okay. Right? So... 
he ended up signing me. He came Atlanta and sat over. Niggas. Crazy, right? <laughs> Look, I, you, know what you, you know what you did. <laughs> Hustler. Nah, he was a good dude, bro. He, he was a great dude. Shout out to Jason Ward, man. But he actually, he had like a godson or something that was playing football. Okay. Had my high school or whatever. But he moved back, ended up signing me. My mom would let me drive, skip school, and go to Atlanta and like do this music thing. So studio sessions. Uh, somewhat of development, like teaching me poise, but in a, as a kid in a different era. This okay. was like when I, mindless behavior. That's dope, man. I, you up. know what? It's funny you mentioned that <clears throat> your mom supported that. Yeah, man. Do you? I don't know if everybody's seen it, but there's the that you know the Kanye documentary is out right now, mm-hmm. man. And to me, the most important part of the whole document. There's a couple important pieces to it to me, but one of the most important pieces was the fact that like. This dude's mom was just like a phenomenal supporter yeah. of this man's dreams. Yeah. And she said something in the, I caught it in one of the uh, things. She goes, um, I listen to Kanye because Kanye listens to me. Mm. I was like, damn, that's crazy, bro. Like, what a basic, simple way dang. to, like, get involved in your kid's life. Like, bro, listen to them. Yeah. And then they'll listen to you in return. That was pretty dope. But, but. I, I can speak to this because I know your mom. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like when I when I watch her interact with you and I watch you interact with her, yeah. it's like I see exactly that. It's like that's crazy. It's a crazy, it's crazy what your kid will do, man, if you support him. Yeah. If you just get behind him, you ain't gotta go spend a whole bunch of money. You ain't gotta go crazy. You sometimes you just gotta show up and be yeah. like, hey man, you know, it sounds like shit, but I love it. Straight and up. I love you. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Straight up. Daddy. And that's what she did, bro. For real, for real. Did it sound like shit? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Let, oh, you know what? Yeah, man, it did. I'll say this. Let me be clear, cause my mom would still be like, "No, it didn't. It, I, I, it, I never sucked. Okay. It wasn't horrible. I'm saying like, yeah, it was trash compared to what you've developed me yeah, into now. Well, that's cool. I, this, yeah, that I'm pretty sure it's no comparison as to, you know, what you were when you were, um, 14, right? And now, is my mic going out for y'all? Mm-mm. Oh, so it's Mm-mm. just my headphones. Yeah. Yeah, that shit. Anyway, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but now it's a decent record, though, bro. It has structure to it. it yeah, cool. that's crazy. Okay, so as you progressed, uh, yeah, at, at what point did you actually start to seek out beats or 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 try to work with producers? Man, what's crazy is I always did. So okay. because my older brother, my older brother, shout out to Jeremy, bro. He's a, he's four years older than I am. Okay. And he is a diehard. My brother, the type of musician that I'm like, all you want to do is music every day. This is me talking to him. Like, bro, okay. we got to make some of myself. He's like, I'm going to play these drums. Like, I didn't understand it. So my brother, because he was already a musician, he had other musician friends that were already okay. doing certain things. Okay. It's like, yo, your little brother dope, man. And would just give me stuff. So okay. I always had an understanding of like, I needed, you. I never did the YouTube beat. Thing. Like okay. never did that. There was literally always someone around me who knew how to pull out a keyboard, bro, and like lay these sounds down. You know what? I'm glad you're saying that because when you first started coming around here, um, so 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 I met Josh when I was working on Crit's album. Yeah. Okay. Being that they're from Mississippi, they got big friends. Crit. Yeah, big. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big Crit's album, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, so they got <laughs> friends and family that are you know they're connected in some way or another. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Josh ended up in a session when I was working with Crit and came through. He was visiting Crit, though. It wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Um, they played the song, played the song or whatever. And fast forward three, four years later, I got this kid booking sessions out of my, you know, stoop, my B room. And mm-hmm. I'm not really open yet. So it's kind of awkward that somebody's booking already. Mm-hmm. But anyway, it was him. And he knew what he was doing, but I didn't. But what was, but what I, the reason I brought this up is because. He was working on his own album. Like, he was a and r his own album. He was picking his own beats. He was paying for his own beats. He was in there. He brought an album to me that essentially he put together on his own, him and his, you know, partners. Mm-hmm. Um, Dope. Is that the Honey a, album? Yeah. The Honey album, bro. Okay. And it, it's really good. Dope-ass like, album. It's a yeah. dope-ass album, bro. Yeah. And I was just like, yo, this is crazy, man. So I didn't know that. Did you, that I thought it was just whatever, whoever you were with at the time. Nah, man. I eat down to Hood. Like, Hood, <laughs> he produced like three of those. There's only like eight tracks on it, bro, but... Shout out to Hood. Yeah, Hood, who is Hood? Yes. Let, let, let yeah. Hood, Hood, man. He's a producer here at the studio at Bandwidth. He's okay. from Mississippi, man. He went to Alcorn with us. He's a cute dog. Him and John 
uh, they were older than I was. So when okay. I came in, they kind of was like the big homies who were doing. Who was John? So everybody knows. John Griggs, man, he's been working me for for a couple years, man. My my manager, my partner, bro, my dog, just been rocking with me from the very very beginning okay. of all of this, bro. So yeah. yeah. And that, that's a that's the other part that's really dope about it. Like, uh, you know, he mentioned that hood is down with bandwidth, but it, you know, in truth, is like he he came in with a group of guys that have stuck with him through this process. You know, yeah. and it's been a pretty selfless process. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to watch because not only is Josh, you know, growing and changing in the whole situation, but so is his manager, so is his producer who came in the door with him, mm -hmm. and down the line, you yeah. know, so. Uh, but it, it's it's really cool, man, to hear, cause I di I didn't realize that, you know, I didn't know that, yeah, you know, you didn't have like, a, I didn't I didn't think about it, but you didn't have a musical person going, hey, do this, do that, right? You was really listening. I had to I was find your own sound, legit. And I think the the once I got with willpower, what the the understanding of how to do that was what mm -hmm. was brought to me. Up until getting the willpower, it was kind of just us shooting in the dark with with some type of uh, logic, I'll say. Like, we wasn't doing it aimlessly, I would say, but definitely once I got with Will, he was the one that, like, broadened that palette and widened that perspective. I want to talk about that a little bit because you said shooting in the dark. I know a lot of listeners out there who's, yeah. who's trying to make shit happen are shooting in the dark. They're, right. try, they're trying to navigate through putting projects together and, and paying for So how did you, like, you know... Let's talk about the Honey, because the Honey album is a dope album. If you didn't know any better, yeah, especially with, because I was kind of here a little bit around that time when you first came around. To me, I thought, I, I knew Will didn't do the album, but it's, but the fact that Will co-signed it and Will right. was like, that says a whole lot. Yeah. That he was like, okay, well, go ahead, you know, you, you had your album release, your listening party. Yeah, I, it's crazy. I, so how did, like, you find the producers on there. How did you how, how did you A and R it? How did you like even you know? Man, so that was my second project. Okay, right. And on my first project, which was one four three, uh, that was where I was kind of like cultivating some type of relationship with Big Crit. He was kind of like ushering, showing different things. So okay. they were telling us things that we didn't know. So it's like, oh, we do need a A and R. Well, we do need to find a producer for this. Oh, we do need to find such 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 such. And so we just started seeking out for that and finding people that was like down with us to really like do it. Mm -hmm. And I say that Honey Project was the first time we had money. So 143 was me working at Hooters. I get my check every two weeks. John meet me in the middle. We do the studio time thing. I would write the songs before I go. I know I got four to five hours to record these two songs in that time frame type of thing. Like I had people around me that were musically inclined enough to be able to tell me like that sucks. And I trusted it. You know what I'm saying? So like... Um, I built off of that, so, bro. F so, would you, were you paying for the beats? Or, or I was just, just about to say, yeah, I paid for them. So, Honey was the first time we got a budget. Okay. I had ten thousand okay. dollars. John and I shout out uh, uh, to the to the gift giver, but they they believed in this. Okay. They believed in myself. They believed in John. It was like, hey, here's ten grand. Ten grand. Let me see what y'all can do with it. And so we was happy actually to be able to be like, bro, how much you want for that beat? Five hundred. Here you go. Okay. Type of situation. So yeah. it was like for the first time we was actually able to like pay for studio time, not have to wait two weeks to save up for, and to be, and to be, like, that type of thing. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. I mean, I'm one of the producers. I'm from the old school, and I believe people should be getting paid for what the fuck they do. Right, and right. And so I appreciate it when an artist comes through, man, yeah. and has some kind of budget. It doesn't matter to me how much. Right. Bro, if you ain't got but $1,000, man, and that's all you got, I can respect that way faster right. than a person walking in <clears> and just being like, man, can you just give me, give me, give me. Trying to finesse. Yeah, yeah it's like, don't yeah. finesse, bro. Like, be what you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, anybody who would meet an artist like yourself would know, well, this shit probably worth it anyway. Right. They, they ain't like this dude. Whack. He dope. And you also offering up, you know what I'm saying, to get what you want. Right. I says a lot about, you know, the way you see business. Yeah, man. To me, that's the first sign. I've been, you know, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but I've been online lately putting up nuggets mm -hmm. uh, or at least opinionated nuggets. Yeah. Free game. Of, <laughs> yeah, free game. Of what, um, what I think of things like this. You know what I'm saying? And that's it. To me, it's just like, bro, the people who I think are going to make it are the ones who already know that this is not a game. Right. It's a business. You know what I mean? And so... But you moving like that, bro? That's that's pretty admirable, bro. That's real dope. Yeah, so right. you came out with Honey. Honey was dope, man. <coughs> I think I went to some of those shows, man. 
Um, I got my shirt. You yep. know what I'm saying? I still got Shout the, I ain't wore it yet. I still got the merch, man. Shout out. Oh, he had the, the, the lovely lady yeah, on there, too. I was just oh, yeah. <laughs> now, now, yeah, I'm getting flashbacks now. I'm getting little flashbacks. Of, 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 I said, of, I do have that shirt. Yeah, that shirt. That's a classic shirt, bro. Yeah, I, ain't, I, ain't wore, I don't plan on wearing it. I'm going to keep it Shout out. mint. But anyway, um, after that. That's an NFT. All something. Right. All right. You locked in with Will. And then you all did the uh, song every week. 52 songs. Yep. 52 weeks. Uh, how did that process go? How did you, and that will probably chime in on this too, how did you all decide who to work with producer? Or did you, was it just like a free for all and you're going to pick which, whichever one worked? Like, how did you even come up with who to work with production wise? Well, you know, at Bandwidth is pretty much a production house. Yep. So at the time, it was so many producers here yeah. in the building around just day in and day out. And, and that's still going on. It's still the culture, but it was definitely a lot more people here. And I think. Um, Will at the time He definitely would have to speak to this But he was trying to give the producers Opportunities yeah. To like work with me mm -hmm. He brought me in like this my artist type of energy mm -hmm. Now and, and Correct me if I'm wrong but his space It felt like I'm, I'm busy right now Yeah. So I'm going to let y'all work with him <laughs> Until I'm ready And Man, so Yeah that was, exact, that was exactly it Like yeah. what had happened <clears throat> You know 2019 we had just got into working with Josh. We were building a relationship. He wasn't signed to me yet. We didn't have no business on the table. It was just, you know, brothers trying to get to know each other type of thing, yeah. man. And um, he was working hard, man. And they had cut somewhere around 20, 20 something songs. And we were filling the records. It was just a good thing. And then right at the end of the year, you know, I was just pretty much like, look, let's put a song out every week. You know what I mean? Um, might have, might have, got on the rust wave or something like something mm -hmm. inspired yeah. <clears throat> you know the thought yeah but then it was just like okay well shit you can't just say shit around here you gotta if you say it around here you're gonna have to do it For sure and so it was said and but it was perfect man because no one knew that you know three months later you know covid would hit and then it ended up being like the saving grace of our label our artists our relationship the producers, it kept everybody stimulated and yeah, working man. because we didn't know what to do, you know, <clears> during <throat> that time. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, it was kind of crazy the way it all worked out. But I, I didn't really want to produce it yet. Okay. I wasn't 100% sure what to do with Josh when I first started working with him. I had two other artists here as well. And so... With me, it was just like, I'm I'm a real competitive person, so like I just always present competition in my building. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, cool, well, you know, Sky working on her record, yeah, <laughs> Jordan working on her record, Josh working on his record. Let's see who get the record done first. That's my energy, okay. You know, and I got dope producers, dope young people around me all the time. So it's always like, yo, all right, you say you want to be a record producer, cause right now you're just a damn beat maker to me. Up. You feel me? Yeah. Which you fire, you're a fire beat maker, but you ain't a producer yet. So go produce that. Bring me something back. So it was like a challenge. It was Josh was like the beneficiary, but the real truth is like we're putting everybody through boot camp. Legit. It's like you, oh, you a mix engineer. Okay, record this shit, mix this shit, and send it back to me so that I can send it out to Herb to get it mastered. And Herb gonna let us know if it's not mixed good. So mm -hmm. people like Mo, who was getting his feet wet in mixing and engineering, he was, I threw him in the fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. And some of the mixes got sent back. <laughs> they got sent back just like, hey, man, nah, bro, too hot. Too much on the bass, too much this, that, and the third. Now he's like one of our top mix guys. And, you know, but that process came from just us, you know, recognizing that we have artists that needed development. Yeah. And so the only way to develop the whole process is to develop everybody. Because how whack would it have been if he was writing dope songs and the producers wasn't giving him dope beats? How mm -hmm. whack would it would have been right. if it would have been like, you know, you got a dope beat, but you got Those trash songs. songs. You know what I'm saying? Or y'all did all this work and then the mix trash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nah, completion. Yeah, bro. And then we went out here and put 52 down, do it, repeat, rinse and repeat 52 times. That's like mm -hmm. ridiculous. So... It worked out. And by the way, if you love <laughs> dope ass music, you love dope ass singing, go check out Josh Waters' artist yeah, profile. And just, and just go through the 
the, the catalog. I man. can vouch for this. You know, a lot of people do music all the time. A lot of people say their music is really good. The only thing that I would say that is up for toss is what you like. But if you go back and you listen to them 52 records on Josh Waters, you're going to find excellent production, excellent songwriting, excellent mixing, excellent mastering, excellent marketing. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't get into the whole marketing campaign of it. It was incredible. 52 records, 52 cards in the deck. Yep. Four suits in a, you know, a deck. Yeah, cars, four quarters. Four quarters. quarters. Bro, we killed it. Yep. Absolutely. Now, all that was great. Now, I will say the one thing we fell short on was execution. Yeah. I feel like um, uh, <clears throat> because the records came so quickly, it was we didn't have time to really focus on any one record. And so later on, fast forward almost two years, when I'm taking meetings on Josh and I got a record that's doing really well and a whole album that I know is incredible and they want to look at my, uh, you know. Metrics. My something. metrics. Yeah. They're like, well, yeah, y'all did 52 records, but they don't have that many plays. And I'm like, well, you don't know what we were doing and, you know, who? how the hell do you make a person listen to something a million times if you're dropping something every week? Yeah, and it's an artist that nobody knew at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I I, I think it was a it was a at bat, right? It, it was. So it, so so the next inning you go back up to bat. Yeah, but check this out. This the part that I laugh. I just look at niggas and be like, "Fuck you," because I really know that that wasn't my plan anyway. My whole concept was to help Josh build a catalog of yeah. music that will make him money after. He gets recognized for whatever exactly. the next big play go back is. And stream them Cause bitches. that's when that yeah. shit gonna really happen. Like, yeah. if I didn't take anything from Russ's story, it's that his old music was worthy. Right. <clears throat> He'll tell you to this day that it wasn't his best work. You know. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but but he speaks on it like. But I'm I'm starting to get plaques from that music now. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to hit millions on those records. That records that he knows weren't weren't his best work. Right. But, but that's, and that's the shit. Like if I, I want, I want, I want Josh to be able to like invest. That those are the residual bullshit monies mm-hmm. that he just got coming. Like boom, just imagine when he gets that's to the real. point where these records are making him millions of dollars off of, and he ain't even never cared about it. Yeah, that's crazy. And I think for me, the biggest thing that that fifty two did was the, de- like you keep saying, develop me. Yeah, it it made me comfortable to be in the studio regardless of how many people was in the room or uh, it made me a better writer it made me you know what i'm saying that was the biggest piece of it 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 definitely turned me into just a studio animal yeah but yeah i i'm i'm excited about this kid you know what i'm saying i think that we we all are involved in things and sometimes it's strictly business sometimes it's labor of love sometimes it's whatever the hell it is but when you can kind of get it all in one, mm-hmm. that's when you know you got something that's going to go somewhere. You know, the the hardest part in all of this for me is just kind of like staying in the car when it's rough, you know, or yeah. knowing that like <clears throat> time is still ticking. You know, we're all aging every day. So like the 22-year-old, what, what was you, 22 or 23 when Three. I met you? Three. So the 23-year-old guy that I met, it's not the same guy that he is when he's 26. Right. You know, or 25 or whatever. You mm-hmm. feel me? So that's it. Just figuring that part out. So now today, you know, again, talking to producers, now today, like how does Josh work in terms of like, let's say a producer really fuck with you and want to work with you? Like how do you deal with producers now? Do you like have an email open or do you do you go looking on, not YouTube, say so you never did the YouTube yeah. thing, but do you go looking on the internet to find a beat I mean, or, like, or do you I'll just do you honest, call it Will? Do you I was just about to say I'm I'm signed to my favorite producer right now. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's like I wouldn't say that I go out looking for beats. And then there's so many. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shay Renaissance yeah. and producers here still. So you yeah. got Shay Renaissance and Hood in the building, constantly cranking out heat, man. But producers do reach out often, and I never like turn folks down because of that. I'm like, you send me a pack or pull up, play some stuff. However, man, but that's that's pretty much it for the most part yeah. as far as me and producers go. Um, 
I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you, as his producer, uh-huh. I'm always looking for records. Like, I want the best for him. Like, this ain't about me at all. Like, I I do want, I'm going to be a part of what he's doing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, like, there's so many roles that I could play in this that I don't have to be the person to actually write the songs. It just so happens that I'm around him enough to be able to say, like, it's like anybody who's around an artist or you're developing something. It's like, we just know what we want. We know what we have and we know what we're doing. And sometimes we want to, you know, include a person or talk to a person. Here's what's really dope about what happened this time. So we did the 52 records. Um, several producers involved, you know, great, great young guys that are doing great stuff. I also helped produce on some of it. But what it did was it just kind of put us in a space of how to make music. Yep. And it's cool. So, but... As good at making music as we thought we were, we take our ass out to L.A. last year, and we pull up on my good friend Malay. So mm-hmm. Malay is multiple Grammy For winning, sure. multi platinum. You know, he did, mm-hmm. he's he did Frank Ocean, he mm-hmm. did John Legend, he you know one of the few uh, unicorns to work with Andre Three Thousand. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And then on top of that, like he's so eccentric that he's got like. People you'll never, everyone will never know. You know, some people certainly know, but everyone will never know some of these people he worked with because yeah. he's so eccentric. But we go out there and we just thinking, you know, shit, let's go get a record with Malay. He's the homie, woo woo woo. We get out there, man, and he says a few things, does a few things, and me even being in the game as long as I have, shook me up about my shit, and I was just like, yo, all right, so we changing this whole shit up. Whatever we thought we was doing, we're not doing that. You understand what I'm saying? Never have I had a conversation with a producer who understood not only how important the music was to the situation, but he understood the culture of who we needed to be selling music to. You understand what I'm saying? So, Josh is a crooner. He can sing, sing. You feel me? So with that, that's the first thing. We we just do what was natural. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. And we will always be able to do that. Mm-hmm. But we but if we're honest with each other, we were attracting an older audience. Like we were getting aunties and you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, cougars. Just cougars. In his in his world, in my world. <laughs> it's, baby, it's whatever, <laughs> but um, but we were just attracting the wrong demographic. Okay, but we go out to LA, man, and we get this new energy, and that's when I started to realize the type of artist I had and what I had on on my hands. It was like, okay, not only is this kid really good at what he does, but he's coachable. He's also open to change. Because imagine you being a trap rapper and just out of nowhere I tell you, you need to become lyrical and we doing boom bap shit from now on. Right. You feel me? It's mm-hmm. probably not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to have a whole bunch of pushback and this is, probably, this is probably the ending coming. You right, feel me? Right, right, right. I wasn't that drastic with Josh, of course, but at the same time, I was. Because we're talking about a... Like he said, he was brought into the game by soul singers, bro, like Anthony Hamilton ass niggas. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like that type of soul music. So deeply rooted, you know, gospel energy. And, bro, we just switched this whole thing up. And he was, bro, he was blown away, man, by the way that Malay um, and I molded this new record which essentially turned into a sound. Crazy, bro. It's crazy. The session changed my life. If I can keep speak back to that. Please do. That session changed my life, bro. And that happened March like 11th. That session, I think. March 9th. Whatever. We went like the 6th through the 12th, I believe. but Or the 8th through the... Whatever days we were there in March, it's rolling back around for it to be a year. What that session did is still like manifesting itself if that makes sense like that was just the start of me being presented with something 
different and because i know how bad i want to grow how bad i want to be like not just cool i want to be great at this i want to be exceptional at this that was the start of me getting like a glimpse of light as far as to answering the question of how do i get there yeah and to this day i'm still like expanding but it's from that session you know what i'm saying that's crazy bro yeah for real that's crazy if that ain't a testament to Music production and music producers in the role they play. Oh, man. Yeah, bro. I don't know what is. Bro, any producer, man, that's not about shifting the culture through their music, I don't even want to hear that shit. I right. just don't care no more. Like I've been doing it too long. It's like right. I'm not into the trends, bro. I want to make a person lose their shit over this. You know, undeniable, undeniable, bro. Dang, if I want bro. you to cry, if the intent was to have you crying, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. If the intent was to get you, you know, to champion you, then that's what I'm here to do. And I think that that's what's missing. Like, I don't want to fit in. Yeah, bro. I don't care. No, but I don't care about that. I, I think that. I, but I don't want to lose. I don't want anyone to confuse being able to write records though that are huge and able to relate with people i don't want i don't think you should get so weird with your journey mm -hmm. that you're not interested in what people think yeah that's yeah. stupid we ain't in this for just yourself so don't become a selfish you know producer or mm -hmm. creator because that ain't cool yeah you know only a few people can do that right i mean but the greats know how to do what they do the best yeah. and shift the culture while doing it. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes it, it trips me out because you ever heard some of the simplest songs, bro? You'd be like, bro, how is that even a hit record? But then you're like, but that's exactly why it's a hit record. It's like, that shit's crazy to me. So I appreciate I appreciate that yeah. in, in you, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as an artist. Yeah.